Hello? You? Matt, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, for some reason the camera isn't showing me. No, 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 no. Oh, there yeah. we are. Just as ugly in person. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, man, that's a sweet handlebar mustache, though. Um, It is the second time I've ever had the handlebar mustache. The original, I was actually a NASA contractor. And one of the crazy things is I had to shave it to uh, get respirator tested, which is funny because I never had to wear a respirator. And yeah, it was just as big then, and uh, we had a funeral for it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am joined here with a extra special guest, Mr. Quincy Johnson. I, uh, I among other people, call him Curse Bud, and uh, that is his handle, at, uh, blah, 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 blah on Twitter where you can find him. Uh, yes, I get uh, rubber gummed quite often, but um, yes, uh, I'm going to tell you guys why it's special today. And I wanted to tell uh, obviously Mr. Johnson, the re other reason why uh, this is a special occasion. This is uh, the free Matt podcast. First ever interview. Uh, quite often we have. Yeah. Um, I'm honored. <laughs> yes, I've I've actually been a guest before, but I've never done the interview, so this is wild to me. Um Oh Lord. Um I will give a little bit of a uh heads up and then I'ma hit you with those those questions. Um folks, uh I I remember I've actually I remember you before you did the uh, morning brew with Hunter Drew. I had uh, run into you one, uh, one other time before then. Uh, actually, some of your jokes were actually, hands down better than mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, folks, I, the, the thing that stuck out uh, uh, about our podcast, basically getting the government out of your life, and there were a lot of other things like self-improvement, living a better life. Um, this man, obviously, uh, I, I wanted to tell you guys that uh, a trucker and yes, as much as I had a funny joke lined up and I completely screwed that one up. Um, it was about oh. something about, yeah, I, I, heck I lost my notes. So um, now the irony was uh, he's a trucker. And when I grew up, I didn't know that many people in trucking, but I've known people now that first it's your, uh, it's a different kind of lifestyle and it's something that I should have considered among uh, many professions, but it was kind of, uh, there were too many stereotypes and not enough truth given to me. Um, would you uh, like to introduce yourself properly to the, uh, well, to the poor, the poor people watching this? Right on, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It is the man, the myth, the who the hell is that guy? At Cursed Fud, aka Quincy Johnson, truck driver, and fat man just trying to live. That's me. Um, yeah, how's that for an intro? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, oh Lord. I, I, I'm not trying to hit you with two minutes. Well, yes, uh, I did want to thank you for lot lizards, by the way. I did know about lot lizards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't. They're out there. Not, I, it's not as bad as it was in the old days, uh, from what I hear, but they're still out there knocking on doors and interrupting our damn sleep. <laughs> Is it you're feeling lonely or, or uh, they need a meal? Which one of those? It's a little bit of both, man. Feeling lonely. I need the meal. Kind of use your radio. Kind of borrow some money. 
I'm like, man, go away. Go away. Like, I'm asleep and tired. You look funny. Go away, you know, variety of things. I was going to say, when does it stop being, uh, can I borrow some money and <laughs> when you're paying for something? Yeah, first of all, yeah, first of all, borrow means you're going to pay it back. We're probably never going to see each other again after today. So what do you mean borrow? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's crazy, man. Like I said, I haven't seen too many of them. You know, um, I've been out there four and a half years. I think maybe, yeah, I'll say about maybe four or five times. So like I said, it's definitely not as bad as it was in the 60s, 70s, and 80s and whatnot. But they're, they're, they're still out there. Normally, the truck stuff, they have a lot of them. I tend not to park there. You know what I mean? That, that's why I don't see them as much because I either – uh, either park on the side of the street or I park at a mom and pop truck stop in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah, it's like most of your lot lizards are going to be in populated areas. It's like LA, a whole bunch of lot lizards. Uh, freaking uh, Cairo, um, Illinois, not so much. <laughs> I like it. Um, it, it was, oh Lord. Um, I think I had a discussion with, I know a, a, dry, a guy drives for FedEx and he's a, a it's like a, I don't know if they call it a shuttle run. It's a dedicated route. And yeah, that's it, dedicated. And he, he, he's told me a couple of stories and I know some guys actually in the, um, uh, in the chemical industry that, that work on uh, the work on the river. Well, it's not trucking, but they still run into the same, the same clientele at uh, uh, less reputable gas stations and in places like yeah. truck stops. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean if they're not if they're not trying to sell you know their body, they're trying to sell you something else. Like, hey, I got some cologne, or I got a watch for sale. Like, I got a guy offered to sell me a gold watch. You know, it's on truck stop in North Carolina. I'm just like, it's quite all right. I'm okay. You know, what I'm saying like. Even if I was to buy a gold watch, it wouldn't be from some random guy at a damn truck stop, you know. I feel you. Um, the one of the 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 thing the the things the guys used to tell me the the guys were on the boats and a lot of them were uh, either Louisiana or Texas guys, and they'd always have some story about uh, you know fighting off. Uh, they had this crackhead that stole their uh, uh, antenna. I had to think of the name of it, the antenna, and when they went into like when they went in to, you know, uh, go get some food, they go out there and the woman had stolen the antenna. It was one of those metal antennas and she was trying to smoke crack out of an antenna. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to fight her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, the only really, only really crazy last story that I have, cause I was in, um, uh, Stockton, California. And I, I've said this before on, on another podcast. It's just because it's, just it's just hilarious, like the amount of hustle that these ladies had in them. They had about maybe 20, 30 spots, and there was about a good 8 to 12 females working it, and they all got progressively hotter as the night went on, which is a rarity, you know what I mean? And after about the fourth time of them knocking on my door, asking if I needed company, I lied and told them I was gay, and I hoped that I would get them to stop knocking on my door. I'd be goddamn if they didn't send a man over five minutes later. I'm just like, oh, my fucking Lord, are you serious? Like, they actually sent a guy over. I'm just like, hey, no, I'm actually married, faithful, wholesome to my man, go away. But I was just like, y'all really are about your damn money out of here in Stockton, California. Go figure. I was going to say next, they'll probably bring a llama around or something. God, man, if they did that, I would have left them parked somewhere else. Screw that. <laughs> Screw that, man. Yeah, it's like, if, if you're parked somewhere, every once in a while, you'll have somebody come knocking on your door, which that's really kind of one of the unwritten rules about trucking, is that unless it's absolutely necessary, never knock on another driver's door, unless it's absolutely necessary, because either trying to sleep or just minding their own business, you know what I mean? So it's like, we know somebody coming up 
asking for money, we know right off the bat that's not a truck driver. Because a real truck driver would never ask another truck driver, never knock on their door and ask them for money because we know that you can get a cash advance from your company 24-7. So that's that's the uh, that's the first red flag right there, asking for money. You know, so I'm just like, oh, Lord, here we go again. <laughs> Heard that. Um, oh, uh, one of my questions that was uh, I wanted to throw around um, – this was uh, kind of like how you, the you know how you got. Uh, I'm gonna say led into trucking, but um, like where you grew up, and uh, like obviously you said who you were, but uh, what what kind of led you into choosing trucking? Okay, good question. Here's what happened: four and a half years ago, I was stuck on stupid, wasting my. Is it okay if I curse real quick? Go for it. I wasted wasting my motherfucking life away. You know, I had um I had to leave Colorado for the second time with my tail between my legs and go back to Texas. And it hurt. <laughs> that was a very humbling bus ride home on the Greyhound. I remember my friend dropped me off. I looked at him, he looked at me, we both started laughing. He was like, when these days your black ass to get this shit right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, one of these days, man. So we gave me a bag of weed for the ride home. And uh, I basically came up with a five-year plan, you know, to uh, get back up to Colorado. And the plan was real simple. I still follow it to this day. Focus on the money, fuck everything else. So uh, at the end of that five years, my plan was to, was to be back in Colorado have 10 grand in the bank, car paid off, and either be a welder or a truck driver. The way, um, the reason that truck driving went out is because um, I was, like I said, in Austin at the time, um, living in some guy's, uh, not basement, but in one of his lower rooms or whatever, listening to a show in Denver. You ever heard of the guy, uh, Michael Brown, from that, from that hurricane shit in New Orleans, like 2006? No? No, I'm, I'm, I'm still drawing a blank. I'm trying to remember okay. if I did. Gotcha. Um, he was the one that George Bush said, Brownie, you're doing a, a uh, heck of a job. That guy. Nothing? Okay. Anywho, um, he, he, he's got a radio show in Denver, and we, we follow each other on social media on Twitter. And back then, he was still taking phone calls. I'm like, you know what? It's Friday. I'm smoking weed. I ain't got shit else to do. Let me go and call this man. So I call him up, and he was just like, is this? And at the time, I was under my old account before I got suspended. Damn you, Porter. Uh, he was like, hey, is this Queen Shalos BBWs? I'm like, yeah, this is me. So we started chit-chatting. He's like, what the hell are you doing in Texas? I'm like, I'm saving up money so I can come out to Colorado and uh, learn to be a, 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 a truck driver. He's like, all right, back. So he puts me on hold real quick so we can talk offline, takes the next caller, the next call is a look. My name is Mike, okay? Uh, I don't know what it is. I came at the right time. I heard that man's plea, heard his story. I want to help. I run a truck driving school in Colorado. You tell him if he can find a way up here, we'll pay for his training and find him a job as a truck driver. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, my first thought was, what the fuck is in this weed, man? I must be high. That ain't just happened. <laughs> nah, dude. I'm like, hi, shit, that ain't happened. Nah, 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 nah. So he takes me off holding just like, hey, man, full disclosure, I'm high as shit. Did that really just happen? He's like, yeah, man, here's the guy's number. And I called him up and everything and uh, gave me his information. i never forget, like I said, I uh, went to sleep that night like, all right, this better not be no dream. <laughs> this better not be no dream because if I wake up in the morning and find out this shit didn't happen, I'm going to be real pissed off and I'm going to burn Austin to the goddamn ground. This better not be no dream. Because, like, I, I, I didn't want to go back, you know. I mean, I, I like, oh, God. Woke up that next morning, that Saturday morning, called him just to make sure. He's like, yeah, this is me. This really happened. That Tuesday, I was gone. I And um, I've been up and driving the truck ever since, you know. Went to the training. Had a couple setbacks. It's the first company I went to. 
They sucked, you know, and I will never recommend anybody going there unless that's your last damn option. Um, then I went to another company out of Denver. I was there for two years. Then I met my woman, moved down to Atlanta, and I've uh, been down there ever since now, uh, since 2017. Yeah. That's, believe me, uh, it's weird because I, I don't want to say who, who it was, but I, if that that's quite a big of a jump. And uh, you're talking about, I've known folks too that have, it, it's not like they washed up, but it's they went over here and they're like, hey, I'm, I thought I had something going, had some setbacks, go over here, do a little bit of something, and finally able to, be able to get a jump on something and something they like too. Uh, like yeah. I mentioned, like welding, like guys I know in welding and stuff. And believe me, that's, I, I know that that was kind of one of my side questions was, uh, you know, like how to get your life better and like advice for people that are adrift. And okay. Yeah. Um, well, in order to get your life better, first off, you have to want to get it better because anybody can talk about it. You can talk until your damn lips fall off. Are you actually going to put in the work? Are you actually going to stick stick to it when shit doesn't go your way? That's going to be the, the main test right there. Let's say you, know, you wake up all full of piss and vinegar. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this thing. And the light comes around. Boom. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. What then? Are you going to keep going or are you going to just do 180 and go back to your previous life? Um, that right there is going to determine whether you sink or swim. So once you got it in your mind, like you want to go, you want to do this, start and continue. Yeah, I had a couple of setbacks. I ain't going to say what happened, but something happened. And it almost cost me my license. Didn't let it stop me, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, took some more training, you know what I mean, and just stuck to it. Talk, I asked a lot of questions, talked to a lot of truck drivers, watched a bunch of YouTube videos on truck driving, you know, and I'm not saying I'm some super trucker because technically I am still a rookie. You know, I don't even have five years. It'll be, pardon me, man, I've been, I've been eating burgers and hot dogs all damn day. It's Labor Day and shit, man. Um, yeah, I'll have, I'll have five years trucking in March and technically that, that still makes me a rookie. Like I know guys out here that have been out here 20, 30 years. They still say that they're a rookie because in their minds, you're only as good as your last load. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, the guy who trained me, he's been driving, Shit, man, damn it, as long as I've been alive, like, like 40 something years. He told me flat out, the day I think I know everything about being a truck driver, that's the day I'm going to stop being a truck driver because thinking you know everything about this industry will get you killed or will get somebody else killed, you know? So you're constantly learning, you know? I like to say, anybody that, 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 that wants to do it, I would say, listen, don't. Ask them around. Hell, find me on Twitter. Whatever. I would ask you, okay? It's, um, is it a demanding job? Yes. But you can still do it, and it doesn't take a four-year degree or 100 grand or two months to do this. I'm doing this thing, and I, I, I never got past the damn ninth grade. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a felon. Yes, you can be a felon and still drive a truck, okay? And the money is only limited by you. Because you can make as much money as you want to out here. Good money. Like, I think I've tapped out. The most I've done is uh, $1,700 in one week after taxes. I ran my ass off for that one. Uh, you know, uh, normally you're looking at anywhere from, um, let's say, 1000 to 1300 a week after taxes, which is not too bad. You think, you know, 52 weeks in a year, you're making 1000 a week. Assuming you take off, I mean, even if you take off a month for the whole year, that's still $48,000, which is, you know, it ain't Donald Trump rich, but it's enough to take care of you. And, and you know, if you got a wife and kids or a boyfriend and kids, it's enough to take care of them as well, you know? I, I, I know that's one thing that 
was never really showed to me. And that was oh. something that you'd be surprised that um, when people mention problems and it wasn't money, I mean, unless you're an idiot with you, I think you might've mentioned that before yeah. about not blowing oh, yeah. your money. Uh, if you ain't oh, yeah. working, I've you ain't earning. Blown money before. Definitely blown money, man. Uh, I had an inheritance in 2000 when my mother passed away, hundred thousand dollars gone in 10 months, <laughs> you know? Like, I could write a book just on that period. I'd have to change some names and some dates and some places for damn sure. But, whoo, Lord have mercy. And I don't even regret it because it taught me the value of a dollar. Granted, an expensive lesson for damn sure. But I ever get 100 grand again, which I will, I know what to not do with it. I've already had my fun in the sun. I've already had my good times. You know what I mean? I don't need to buy six bottles of Moet in the club and, you know, get six strippers in the VIP. <laughs> Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Yeah, whatever, man, you know? So. I, um, well, most of, most of mine has been, I learned my, I learned, and I, I, everybody mentions this, since there's a point where you're the asshole and you're the one that's been screwing up and yeah. And I learned that the hard yep. way. Uh, I yeah, do. I have every desire to get. I, I mentioned about the meeting in the mines and get guys say these younger cats and say, "I want you to turn back. You know, look look here and turn back twenty years and figure out. You know, hey, don't go down this path. Don't do something stupid. Even if you do something smart and it doesn't work out, it ain't gonna hurt you as much as." doing some completely bonkers and knowing that um, like drinking, you know, drinking for me or uh, not getting the right mindset when working somewhere, not being a good employee. I mean, there's yeah. small, small life skills. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, I'm a, I am tell people, look, if you're going to fuck up, get it out the way early. Because it's a lot harder to recover from a fuck up in your thirties and forties is than it is in your twenties and your teens. So if you're gonna fuck up, get it out the way early. Anybody fucks up. Nobody's perfect. Um, as far as the mindset when it comes to job, yeah, you have to treat your job like it's your job. You know, like when I when uh, right right before I became a truck driver, I was washing dishes and parking cars. Um, and uh, when I was parking cars, it seemed like besides me and the owner of the company, we were the only one that ever took that job serious. Because to uh, to everybody else, this is just their side job. And they had that mentality like, oh, this is my side job, man. I don't give a fuck what happened here, man. Because, you know, if I get fired here, I can just go to my main job. That's a horrible way to think, bro. That's, I mean, it might be your side job, it's still a job. Do you not want to take part in your work? Like, and, are you serious? That would be like you having that mentality, okay, this is my style job. I don't give a damn. The next day you go out to eat at a restaurant and the waiter who serves you is just like, this is my style job. I don't care if the food comes out correctly. I don't care if it, I don't care if you order the steak medium rare and we burn the fuck out of it or we spit your food. It's my side job. I don't I don't care. I put my nuts in your lemonade, whatever. You know, like you know, <laughs> which by the way. I've seen that happen before. I used to wait tables. Don't mess with the waiters. They will mess with your food, okay? Be nice to the waiters. Seriously. Hey, I, have some nasty things. I believe that a person at work, I don't believe, you know, when it, it didn't matter if you're a lawyer or if you're, a, a, you know, a custodian. It, it doesn't matter. But a person at work is a person at work. I don't believe in making somebody feel little at work. I've tried my yeah. best not to. And uh, when I'm at hotels, I leave a tip for the people cleaning my room. Not that I try to make it nasty, but I know uh, I'm, I'm, if I'm living there, it ain't clean. And, hey, but to tell folks, uh, you had mentioned about, you know, the, the side job. A lot of people yeah. remember, especially if you don't own it, the person paying you, they put up risk. They're the ones dealing with the money. Uh -huh. And think of this way. If you're the one saying, oh, it's just a side job, 
the, the 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 bad thing is that you're you're more or less if you would change your mindset and say this is somebody else's money and change the way you look at it look look at look at their money and i know people are like well i like money i was like of course i like money but if you think of somebody else like you know it's somebody else's business it's somebody else it's somebody else's cutting your checks it's somebody else's money and i say that's something that i encourage all men to think that it, it, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to separate that man from the money, but at the same time, I want to respect his money. How would you feel if he was screwing around with your money? And right. Try, try to think that way. Say, you know, even on my bad day, I'm going to try my best and not act like a complete jackass and just say, make it to the end of the day, doing the best I can. Or if you're limping along at 80% and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like, even though I am not a, I am not a owner operator. I drive for somebody else. I still treat it like you know, it's it's my truck. You know, I, I uh, well, I'll admit, I don't wash the truck because the way I see it, every time it rains, that's when the truck wash. You know, that whole thirty to forty-five minutes that it takes to wash the truck. I'm a hustler. That's 30 to 45 minutes I can be driving down the road or uh, getting to the next uh, spot or whatever. Um, but as far as, like, keeping the inside of it clean, yeah, because I have to sleep there. You know, if you're if you're inside of a truck, it's like a damn bathroom. That's an issue. Or if you, like, F up the seats or the bed, like, okay, that's not your bed, but you, I mean, you still got to sleep in it, you know. Or if you, like, don't care about the condition of your truck, and that's another way reason I say side job or not, as a truck driver, you can't have that mentality. The minute you start slacking up a truck driver, that's when people die. You know what I mean? So you do have to get up every morning and inspect your damn truck, kick the tires, get underneath that motherfucker, see if something's broke, something's bent. Do you do you do you do you, do you see something leaking? Do you smell something funny? You know, do your doors close? Properly, you know what I mean? Because the minute you start cutting corners in the truck driving industry, that yeah, you need to get out because something bad is going to happen. It's like I, 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 I don't. I've seen many a truck driver. I don't know how they. I don't know why they do this. They would just get up, do a little stretch, scratch their ass, smoke a cigarette, get right on the road. Won't even crack the hood. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Like, take five, ten minutes at least. Crack the hood with a flashlight, check and see if any wires are stripped or if any belts are broken or something. Are you out of are you are you out of uh, are you out of oil? Are you out of coolant? Are your tires good? You know, like at, at least dump the tires. Because after a while, blowouts. You know, you know, yeah, yeah. After a while, from the tires, you get to hear the cadence that you're looking for. Let you know if your tires are low, or I mean, if your tires are good, or if they need some air. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you want to make sure that you know that your trailer is thoroughly locked in to your truck. Because I've seen a few trailers get dropped. That's no fun. That's no fun. Uh, because what you got to do, you got to sit there and crank it up. You know. Now, if it's empty, it's yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. If I've done empty, it. It's not, I've done it. It's not, yeah, it's not really as bad if it's empty. You still got to, you still looking at about your half hour, 45 minutes of cranking. But if that bitch is loaded up, ah, good luck, buddy. I'll see you in two hours. To enjoy that workout, you know? Or even worse, the landing gear got fucked up when you dropped the trailer. Now the boss has got to spend money, which is probably going to come out of your check to go get a crane to lift that bad boy up so that they can go underneath the damn truck. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's uh like I've I've uh, dropped the trailer once. Um, I maintain that I wasn't properly trained, and I kind of kind of feels like a cop out. I was hauling uh, gas in Wyoming. Went to a gas station. I thought I was unloaded. You know, gave it a tap tap tap. It sounded hollow. And uh, went back to the um, went back to the yard and lowered the landing gear and everything. 
And um, the way that those tankers were set up, um, the the trailer has to be empty. Otherwise, even on even on concrete, the legs are going to buckle. Mm-hmm. So I I wasn't even on concrete. I was on soft mud, and went to disconnect. <laughs> Front end went right in the mud. I'm like, motherfucker, it happens, you know. So it's like, you no half-assing. That was the point of that whole of that whole rant. No half-assing, especially now that it's about to be cold the next two three months. You definitely don't want to half-ass, you know. Carry chains with you. Carry some rubbing alcohol to put in your windshield wiper reservoir. That way, your windshield fluid will not freeze up. You mm-hmm. know, that's a trick that um that I learned from another driver. Methanol you know, in your airlines? I wouldn't put it in the airlines because some some of some of these uh some of these trailers, what it will do, it will actually melt the airlines. So I wouldn't yeah, exactly, exactly. So what I would do to make sure that your trailer brake lines don't freeze up is when you park for the night, just set your uh your tractor brakes, your trailer brakes Leave them engaged so that there's air going, going, going through them. Um, because it's 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 rare that your that your tractor brakes will freeze up, but your trailer brakes can freeze up, you know, overnight. You know, especially you know if you're somewhere that's like you know 20 degrees or or 25 degrees, something like that. So yeah, in the wintertime, uh, those trailer brakes they stay on 24 hours a day. I do not set them. That's see, that's that's pretty wild. Uh, I know it sounds strange. I don't have the the road experience like that. Um, goofed around, uh, well, technically illegally, but we goofed around um, with cryogenic trailers, and um, uh, I I don't know. We, these were like little bullet bullet trailers. I don't know how to describe that. Um, this is compressed air trailers. Mean, yeah. Um, yeah, you might have seen like the helium guys hauling them uh, around but yeah maybe a, a fourth of the size of that okay yeah yeah the fourth of the size of that and that was for like a lab and um uh-huh. i'd move them around in the yard but i I didn't uh because well technically i didn't have a cdl i wasn't supposed to be doing that <laughs> yeah, you can tell i don't do that anymore man, listen it happens i'm gonna say look here man uh now with those with those eod's there's still a way to, you know, cook your books, but uh, God help you if you get caught, buddy. That's not going to be fun. Uh, I I uh, had it happen once. Got shown mercy because he could have thrown the book at my ass and hit me up for about $10,000 worth of fines. Let me up with just a warning. But I also had to sit for 10 hours. And I couldn't move until I got two tires fixed. But uh, yeah, she uh, she could have threw the book at me. But I guess she was like, like I don't do it with this fucking paperwork. Just sit down for ten hours to reset the clock and get the tires fixed, and you can go. I didn't want to say where I was. I was on a military base, and I didn't leave the base. So, kind of, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I will I won't lie to people. The whole uh cdl thing one of the weird things is uh government mandate even though we were driving within uh like private property and stuff like that um right. and that was kind of like my my next question regarding um like government involvement is uh and i could say for my my standpoint that a cdl didn't make us any better drivers but uh <laughs> um where where can the government you know and you can answer is I would say you're my trucking authority uh, there's a magazine called that or something but oh yeah where where can the government make trucking better like what could they do for truckers as far as the federal government I would be I would say loosen up the EOD to where it isn't a consecutive 14 hours. It would be like the old paper logs where you have 14 hours in a 24 hour day. You know what I mean? Like when you was on paper logs, 
you had 24 hours to get to 14 hour clock in. Okay. Um, with the ELD, once you start up your clock, that's it. You have 14 hours from the time you hit on duty to do whatever it is you got to do. And that's just crazy simply because, um, one, weather, I mean, in the winter time, there have been days where I have used up my whole 14 hour clock and barely went 100 miles, mm-hmm. you know, because of the weather. Also, you have to factor in sitting at the warehouse, you know what I mean? Um, sitting at the warehouse can be any, I mean, I've been, I've been in and out in warehouses in 15 minutes being unloaded, paperwork done, good to go. And I've also had to sit at a warehouse for 11 and a half hours waiting on one trailer, which still pisses me off. Because the warehouses, they're the total opposite of the truck drivers. They're not on a 14 hour clock. As a matter of fact, the longer they stay, the longer they get paid. And if there's any union members who are listening, I apologize in advance. Actually, I don't. Y'all are some of the worst, man. Okay, it seems to be uh, most of the words I say at two, three, four, five, six hours, most of them are like union warehouses that just take their sweet ass time. Looking at you, California, good God Almighty! Like there, 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 there are so many truck drivers that just refuse to even travel through that state, let alone get loads in California or take loads out there, because. It's a it's a total crap shoot, you know. For one, the traffic, you know what I mean. If, if you give us a hundred miles of of LA traffic, hundred miles of San Diego traffic, San Francisco, fuck you traffic. I mean, it's it's just bad. Now, once you get out in Northern California in the country, or East California, around in the desert, there's not too much traffic. You may get some, like on the weekends, from people going to Vegas and all the broke sons of bitches coming back Sunday night from Vegas. Um, but yeah, California, man. I mean, they've got so many whack laws in effect, saying that you know, no vehicle over ten thousand pounds can park on our streets at from like say ten o'clock at night to six in the morning. Uh, I know Portland, in particular, they're. I don't know why this rule is in effect in their industrial area where trucks are supposed to be at, but no truck over seven foot high can park on the street uh, anytime past five o'clock. I'm like, really, Portland? That's how we're going to do this? All right. Like, you really only have two damn trucks, actually one damn truck stop in Portland, and if you ain't there by noon, screw you because it fills up that damn quick, you know? Like, aside, aside, from, um, aside from the ELD, that's um that's really it. Now as far as the state governments, I know that the, I know that uh, individual states have a lot of land on reserve. Why not graze some of that land and designate it parking for truck drivers? Because honestly that that's that's like our biggest concern is finding a place to park this son of a bitch when our day is over. On the East Coast, God bless the men and women who drive on the east, on the northeast, on a daily basis. Because, uh, whew, I've only been out there a few times, and I can tell you where not in Virginia, Jersey. If you're not where you got to be by hell, five thirty, you might as well go on over to Pennsylvania and try to get a spot there, because you're not gonna find a spot in VA. Damn sure you're not gonna find one in Jersey. I can tell you that right now. I drove a box truck through Virginia, and I'll tell you this much, even through that one little area that had all the truck stops, and I was like, it was it was in the evening, and obviously I didn't have to stop there, thank God. Um, uh, oh, Lord, yeah. And, and people would say that, oh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's truck country, but it's the weirdest damn thing in the world because even with all the hugest, the biggest damn truck stops in the world, there ain't no place to go. I was like, yeah. Now I'll admit, um, there's one truck stop in Rafine, Virginia. Uh, I don't mind that truck stop. That's a big ass truck stop. 
it's kind of like 700 spots, you know what I mean? And even at like 1030 at night, it, it might be it might be on the last row, but you can find a parking spot there, you know what I mean? But that's like one of that's like one of the rarities. Every every other spot has like you know anywhere from thirty to a hundred spots, and like I said, if you're not there by the time the sun goes down, good luck, good luck. Like driving on like driving west of the Mississippi, I don't mind that because I can always find a spot or I can make me a spot. You know what I'm saying? Like driving in Nevada on say um, um, I-15, I can either find a spot before Vegas or right out to Vegas, and even if those trucks are filled up. Most of the most of the off ramps, they got these big ass dirt lots. Just pull off on the dirt lot and go to sit there. You know, it's we, the same goes for Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and whatnot. Like honestly, if you can't find a park spot, I'm all fucking wrong with you. But it's all in the story. We we had, uh, I will say this much: the in in my state, the I, I for the most part, and it, it just depends on where you're at they really don't care if you pull over on the side of the road in the interstates, uh, the major highways, as long as you're not being a complete dick about stuff or hazmat. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Cause I know some States will put a ticket on your damn, on your damn, uh, uh, window parking on the off ramp. Now I know, um, see, and that's another thing, man. Like a lot of times I start my day early four, five, six in the morning, and it just chaps my ass. I'm driving by rest area after rest area. Not only is the rest area filled, but there's like 15 trucks on the entrance to the rest area. There's another 15 trucks on the on the off ramp to the rest area. I'm like, we got to do better, man. Like, come on, dude. Like, damn, can you just show us just a little bit of love? Just a little bit. I'm not, I'm not asking for it uh, and freaking open my kiss with tongue, but just to, like a freaking reach around or something. Damn, just a little bit of love. Tickle the balls. Huh? Tickle the balls. Yeah, something. Tickle the balls. Bring your sister or something. Something. Just, jeez, man. Like, seriously, like parking. Ah, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Like, honestly, how hard would it be for every state in the continent of the U.S. I can't speak in Alaska and Hawaii because I've never been there. But from what I hear, those are like closed shops anyway. Uh, but I, I, what would it say for every state? We're like, look, we got 50 plots that we own by the state. Is it really going to kill us to take 10 of them, make them flat, and turn them into parking lots? Like, come on, dog. Like, what the fuck, you know? We, we have... Um... I was going to say they have like uh, the, the, the actual, the department of transportation and this depends on what, what state you're in, but I know our state and Mississippi both does this uh, outside of the runaway truck uh, zones, like the landing pads, they yeah. do, they do have um, road construction uh, set aside spots where the state uh, uh, bought like a chunk of land on the side of the road and they didn't build a fence around it. Like, like you know a normal uh like a normal field would be and yeah they in some spots are discontinued and i was like it would have made sense okay you could make um uh like in tennessee where they have the uh maybe have like six trucks and it's maybe it's less than a quarter mile long but you can get the trucks uh you probably get about eight eight trucks in there and they oh it's like uh you're talking about the ones that says like uh, parking area trucks only talking about those spots. Yeah, we we have those. Uh, I won't say it is south of Nashville on sixty five. Maybe they have hold a on, couple of those. Hey, thank you, magician. See you. See you. Have a good one. Hold on, brother. All right. All right see you now. Sorry, uh, that's my our guest leaving and everything. Man, this little kid scared the hell of me with her freaking master twist. I'm like, how did you do that? How did you do that? I'm too drunk for this, man. Come on now. <laughs> oh Lord, man. Um oh, that that was that was funny. Um 
I did have one of my other questions, and it was kind of the same vein as uh, government, you know, uh, trying to make trucking better. Uh, well, I did want to laugh and say for every time you uh, find parking problems, I think it's funny the trucking industry is uh, I'm a veteran, and they're always begging veterans to go learn how to drive and, you know, go work for these companies, even getting uh, after a year or two getting sign-on bonus. Well, the irony was, um, well, you still can't find parking. I was like, do they ever tell anybody that? <laughs> Man, hell no. If they did, nobody would be here to him and a truck driver. And it's like, I, I really, the libertarian in me can't really fault these truck stops like Love's and C.A. Petro or Pilot Flying J for having paid parking. I get it, man, but damn, do you have to have so many? Is what I'm saying. It's like you're already making money hand over fist on fuel and for mock and, and for uh marking up the prices on your stuff like a freaking bottle of Windex is like six, seven dollars at the truck stop, as opposed to two bucks at say the uh the the, uh, the grocery store. You know what I mean? So it's just like you're already getting money hand over fist. Like, you just got to hit us in the next one time and get that extra $8 from us. It's like, there are two truck stops in Denver, and only two, okay? Both of them, over half, I like, yeah, both of them have 300 spots. Over half of those spots are paid parking. Like, come on, dude. Like, why? You know Denver is a big-ass hub for freight and everything. You know what I'm saying? You know that it's kind of hard to find a spot to park. I said, I get it. You're a private business. You want to charge us for parking. Okay, but you got to be you gotta be such an a-hole about it. <laughs> now, luckily, having worked in Denver, I've got a couple of hideout spots where, you know, in industrial areas where it's nice and quiet. Nobody knows about it. And yes, I'm parked on the side of the street, but again, nice and quiet. Nobody knows about that, that area. You know what I mean? Um, I did have a weird question. Um, you know, we talk about you talk about government, and you talk about uh, obviously uh, trucking. Um, do you think that if the government changed their zoning and uh, their zoning and, and building regulations, that it, it would be uh, obviously the there's more people that could compete with these these folks and build more truck stops? Do you think that's something else the government might be able to do to? try to fix fix that kind of problem? I mean, they could do it, but we all know the government doesn't like anybody else's hands in their, in their bowl, so no competition, so I don't think that they ever would do that. Could they do it? Yeah, they could. Will they do it? Nah. Nah, they won't, because that would be doing something smart. Government's not really known for doing smart things, you know. I would like it. I would love to see it, you know what I'm saying, but I don't I don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I honestly, like, the, the, the biggest thing they could do on a federal level is relax the EOD and make it so you can do your 14 hours in a full 24 hours. And then once your 14 hours are up in that 24 hours, yeah, cool. Sit for 10 hours. I got no problem doing that. But to have a continuous 14 hours, I mean, if that warehouse keeps you there five hours, you're fucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you, you have effectively returned what was going to be a 600-mile day into a 200-mile day or less, you know, because I can't tell you how many times I've been like, I bet, man, warehouse opens up 7 a.m. I'm going to get there at 7 a.m. At the latest, I'll be out uh, 9, 9.30. I, you know, it's going to be a light load. I can still haul my ass and get about a good five, six hundred, maybe even a magical seven hundred miles in a day. When in reality, you get there at seven, they keep your ass there till you know eleven thirty or even noon. Now you're going through midday traffic, you're going through all the construction and whatnot, and yeah, maybe you got to shut down. You know, what I'm saying only getting two hundred and eighty or 300 miles or so, and you use up your whole 14 hour clock. And I'm just like, damn, man, you know, like, 
do something about that. You know, now there there is a way. Like if you start your day at midnight, technically and legally, you can run for thirteen and a half hours and whatnot. But for a lot of drivers, that's not doable, being that a lot of your deliveries don't start until normal business hours. You know what I'm saying? So if you're doing a dropping hook where it doesn't matter when you show up, what time you leave, yeah, cool. You can start your day at midnight. Like I know a lot of drivers that most of their most of their uh the majority of their stops are dropping hook, meaning that they go to a warehouse, drop a trailer, hook up to another one, keep going and then repeat. They won't even start, like I said, literally until midnight when everybody is, is almost off of the road, you know what I'm saying? So God bless them. But for everybody else, it's just like, uh I'm uh it's it's well to tell folks about that, I said it's it, you know how I've I've seen that kind of stuff. Uh our guys, uh I'd rather say my current job, but guys are on the road a lot and uh Obviously, you've heard I took a box truck up to Virginia a couple different times. Now, I haven't made the cross-country trip, but to tell anybody else that, I said, it, it is very cumbersome, and I don't even think we're supposed to spend, you know, like eight, eight hours on the road, and it's supposed to be down hard, and to tell folks, it's like, you can't find hotel rooms. Now, just, to, I mean, it's different, you know, if you sleep in your truck, but you're you're hauling your house around. You got to find a place to put your house. Yeah. yeah, man. Well, I mean, when you when you were driving that box truck, how heavy were you? Because you got to remember, if you're under twenty six thousand pounds, you're not under DOT rules. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. how how heavy were you? It was uh, Department of Defense rules. Oh, okay. 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 All right. My bad. That uh, that. That, yeah, I don't know. I know. I don't know nothing about about DOD. Um, but yeah, man, so like that, just the, the whole parking issue, man. It's just like there are many a spot across America where, like, it could be a hundred or so miles between rest areas and truck stops, and um, that's kind of an issue. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going through Nevada. If you're not on I-15 or I-80, if you're on one of those state highways and whatnot, like, if you're on the, what they call the loneliest road in America, uh, and it's called that for a damn good reason, because ain't shit out there at all. Um, yeah, if you're on US-93, you know, going up to, um, uh, is it Idaho? Idaho, yeah. Yeah, if, if you're up there, there's nothing around, bro. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Sure, you can find a place to park. I just pull off on the side of the road in a dirt road, but good luck if you got to take a dump, you know what I'm saying? Or if you ran out of food and, you know what I'm saying, you're hungry, like, nothing out there. Like, yeah, honestly, that's not a tip. If, you, if you're going to be gonna be a truck driver, you need to have at least a case of water in your truck at all times and some type of non perishable food. Canned goods, you know what I'm saying? Chips or whatever. Beef jerky is pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Something just in case. Because you never know, you know, you might be on the road, so the road stranded somewhere with no service, or if it's one time and you're stuck at a truck stop or rest area for two days or something, which we normally happen, you know? Uh, not not telling people where the destination was, but our, I think it was our uh, guys when they were going I 10. And, uh, yeah, they got, the, you know, the infamous last stop for how many hundred of miles. And, yeah, they're like, you, you're, st- even that stop wasn't the greatest. And all the people they've, weird people they've run into, uh, a good ice cream, but crazy people. And somebody, you know, hey, man, I really, you know, they, when they ask you for money, they really need something to eat. And it's because it got stuck out in the middle of nowhere. And, it is it as bad as some spots they've been to? No. Um I think they got lucky like in Jersey and stuff like that. So but even the rigs, like the, the, the vehicles that we end up driving for our actual job, um, they're right under C D L level. And um 
the weirdest thing is that uh they've we get well since we're government plates we get to buzz the uh uh way station and oh, bless uh, your hearts. Ah, ah, you lucky sons of bitches bless your hearts i can't stand way stations hey i'm sorry <laughs> They still pull us over. They still pull our guys over every once in a while when they don't know who it is. And I've never had that opportunity, but just imagine a guy that's going, you know, probably too fast for that type of vehicle. And all of a sudden you got a guy in a Mustang, uh, DOT, uh, not DOT, uh, uh, like the trooper, like a state trooper, just wow. And then uh, the guy's like, pulls him over and all of a sudden he goes he just stops like you think he's going to get irate and he rolls that we roll the our guys roll down the window the guy goes i made a mistake guys uh uh try to keep him safe he literally didn't say anything because he looked at the plates and he goes oh <laughs> yeah the government yeah yeah apparently they actually look after their own man but when it comes to us uh it's like Every every year, like mid mid June, there's three days that's called a DOT blitz, where uh, they will randomly randomly pull drivers in for inspections, anything from a level one to a level uh, three. All right, um, level three inspections just a simple you know walk around the truck, check your lights. Level one. Huh, Bend over, spread your cheeks, and cough damn near. It's that damn intense, you know. And I remember my first year, I made all these horror stories on a serious section channel about, you know, some guy spent three days in the county jail because he didn't want to help the uh, the trooper with the inspection because that would be a violation of Fifth Amendment rights. And they brought in the DOT officer who was just like, I'll be honest with you. If we want to find something wrong with, with your truck, we're going to find something wrong with your truck. I don't care if we just bought that motherfucker 20 minutes ago. I can find something wrong with I'm just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So it's just like, yeah, some of the way stations can be real iffy, you know what I mean? So my policy is when I do have to go to the way station and, like, come inside and smile on my face, you know what I'm saying? I try to make that shit as quick and painless as possible. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. You know, things like that. Just so on a purpose, keep going. You know what I mean? Because why well, make the job harder than than what it need be? You know, that's just that's just that just makes no sense at all. And I've told folks, um, you know, there's people that I, obviously I call mathematically challenged, but no. uh, if you don't, uh, you know, not you, but if folks don't remember that. Uh, the amount of stress, in, and we've seen this lately about bridges, especially where I live, uh, bridges and the condition of bridges. And you think, okay, you know, what is another, I hate to joke and say, what's another ton? Well, you fast forward and what happened in Minnesota where that, I was like, yeah. there you go. I was like, "Here, hey, have at it, guys. <laughs> I was well, like, you know what? If you're not going to get Atlas, like, a, get some stuff with GPS and make sure it's a truck GPS, because do not get a, a GPS for trucks and stick it in your damn mat truck. No, you need a GPS for trucks, a Ram McNally, a Garmin, a TomTom, Tom, something like that. Something for trucks, like literally go to a truck stop and buy a GPS from there. Because if you buy a car GPS and try to use it as a truck driver, you're so, you're so screwed. You're so screwed. And even then, get a regular laminated atlas just in case that GPS goes down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like some trucks, the EOD will have the GPS already in it. Sometimes that GPS acts up. Or sometimes the GPS can't recognize the address you're, that, 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 that you're trying to punch in. I've had that happen before. Where I've had to get on my phone, get on, on Google Maps, get the address, and try to find an address close to where I'm going and then try to figure it out from there. Uh, we had a guy and and he wasn't a contractor. You could tell he had never dealt with, or he was really bad at dealing with military places. He got an address, was on the military base. 
Number one, he didn't even look anything like or didn't look at what where he was going. All right, he just says, I got an address, me go pick up, you know, shaking his paperwork. <laughs> <Where's that Mongo? laughs> All right. He tries to, his GPS tells him to drive into I don't remember the gate number, but it's a it's a regular car gate, or it was at the time before they changed uh before they changed the, the road system and it had Jersey barriers where you have to dodge them. Well, if you oh, know yeah. what I mean, that's cars. That's not, uh, if anybody is smart enough to know about trying to drive a, uh, a trailer through there. And he was just like the, the trailer, the GPS says, told me to drive here. And he got stuck trying to drive in it. Like he wasn't not even like using his brain. Like my truck won't fit there. He just tries yeah. to drive in there. And, and and you said GPS and you said the Atlas. It's like being prepared where you're going, knowing where you're going or having an mm-hmm. idea. Uh, because because there, there are sometimes, yeah, uh, e- even a truck GPS will take you down, not necessarily the, the wrong road, but the long road, you know, because there, I mean, I've been out there long enough where I would look at a GPS and be like, that's a, bullshit about to go that's going to put me through traffic i know a better way around there because i've been here before and i will go that route so yeah what i do have a gps i don't have that be my end all be all you know what i'm saying i have atlas i've got uh, the google phone um map and everything and if need be i will call the shipper or the receiver directly and be like hey i need you to call me back so i know how the hell to get to your damn place you know what i mean so uh, it's like, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say uh, exactly what you said about calling those folks. It, uh, and I know that's preparation. And we did the same thing and uh, try to get like uh, tips. Like I always ask people tips and you're like, well, you know, first it makes them human beings, the people you're working with, even though they don't work for your company or work for you. I says, uh run into folks from Alabama, all sorts, uh, all sorts of different places. But we had, um, what's the, what's the best way to describe us? He was a, uh, uh, transplant up in Virginia and he would even say, you know, give us tips. And, and I was like, well, Hey, can you, you know, what's the best way at this time frame to get out of here? And he'd tell us and like, Oh, well, don't, don't ever think about hitting a right it's seven o'clock in the morning over there. And yeah, the, or Hey, the sweet spots at 10 and you could pull in the GSA facility and uh, there's a good chance they're going to drop you off in this window. And one time, well, the folks didn't quite get their stuff together, but I'm not hating on them. They're decent people. But uh, what you mentioned about uh, knowledge, like local, local knowledge, and obviously looking at a uh, – and looking and trying to figure out where roads go with each other. Um, uh-huh. it, it will save you uh, – and obviously th- it doesn't always mark your traffic either, so you can always ask people wh- where's the traffic but um, – or uh, uh, traffic uh, construction. Right. One of the weirdest things is that uh, without that local local knowledge, and this is you know uh, setting up yourself for success instead of failure. Um, right. When you look at an address and trying to figure out like uh, sweet, uh, there's a reason why I say that. Uh, you you look at an address and and you ought to know there's something weird about it, and that would make you say, hey, maybe I need to look into where this is. Um, uh, that example I told you about coming to our base and getting stuck in the Jersey barriers. Um, there's people who see that address and it doesn't say building 3301. Uh, and I'll make this up Brundage air station, you know, Brundage Canada. It might just say one, two, three, four. Uh, I would just say communications road, uh, Huntsville, Texas, and people will show up and they're dumbfounded. Like, and, and I'm not trying to pick on you being a convicted felon, but driving up to a military base, being a convicted felon, uh, uh, even if you're on the job and your company didn't tell you ahead of time where you were going and you just got an address and you're on the road, 
showing up to that front gate and not having your stuff straight, trying to drive you know through there. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, sometimes like that, you, you can't help it because you can only go by what's on the bills of laden. It's like if, if the bill of laden doesn't say sweet 300 or building a four just has an address, uh, you gotta go by that. And if you get there and they say, well, you gotta be over here. You know what? Honestly, those things, those, those things happen. I don't, I don't take it personally anymore. However, if it does say it on the address, like 8415, you know, uh, asshole street or whatever building, building elf, you know, I'm going to call ahead. Uh, where is building elf? How do I get there? Can I get a truck back there? Do I need to sign in somewhere? Who do I talk to? You know, uh, also, yeah, what I do now, any location I go to, well, any, any, any warehouse I go to, to pick up a load or drop off a load, first thing I'm doing, I'm getting on my phone, pulling up the Google Maps, and I'm seeing how long it's going to take from where I'm at to get there. And then I add on, then I add on an hour and a half because Google Maps is for cars, not for trucks. So if it's saying it's going to take, you know, four hours, okay, I know in my truck, it's going to be five, maybe even five and a half because I'm, you know, 70,000 pounds and I'll be going through, through, through us or our traffic, you know. And I'm also, what I'll do, I'll put it on satellite image and I will zoom in on, on the warehouse that I got to go to. That way I can, you know, figure out what street I need to come in from, you know what I'm saying? Do, can I pull in or do I got to back in from the street or something? Uh, Uh, are you still there? I think we're, we're froze up a little bit. It's going to be, it's going to be a bitch to get out of Oh, I think we're, I think you, I think we froze up a little bit. I'm not sure if that's my end or your end. Uh, I'm coming in good. You are still froze up on my end, though. Oh, that's uh, that's on both of us. Oh, that just cut us out. Oh, Lord. That cut us out. Hey, folks, we've had a little technical difficulty. I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping I got them back because I did not. Yeah. Hey, hey, there, we are. there he is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little fresh to recording on Zoom. I usually don't have technical difficulties, but usually I'm not, uh, uh, yeah. Hey. Welcome to trucking. Shit happens. <laughs> For real. Actually, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not that to people. There's no such thing as a normal day in trucking. Ever. Even even if you have a freaking dedicated account, you're picking up at the same place, taking to the same place. Yesterday won't be the same as tomorrow. And so forth and so forth and so on. Always going to see something different out here. Always, always, always. Act accordingly. Huh. Um, where we live, uh, because of bad spatial relations and people that don't navigate well, we have people going the wrong way off of side streets onto the, our interstate. And yeah, we had a FedEx truck and it wasn't, it wasn't my friend, thank goodness. Uh, but yeah, the lady got creamed and it, it she lost her life. And oh. I was just say there's, it's funny because he mentions, you know, he works at night and he, he likes it that way. And it keeps it pretty simple. It keeps things pretty That's simple. Bad. But he he gets kind of, uh, you could tell those kind of things really kind of lay heavy on him. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to mean to cut you off, but it's like, yeah, um, 
full disclosure, last January, I was involved in an accident, a fatality. You know what I mean? Uh, the other person, they didn't make it. Come to find out, it was suicide by truck. He used my truck to um, end his own life, you know? I was um, driving on I-90, coming out of uh, Missoula, Montana, headed to North Dakota, and it was a sunny day. I mean, it was January, but sunny day, not a drop of moisture on the road at all. It was snow in the median and on the shoulder, but the roads themselves were dry. And I see this, uh, this pickup truck cut across the median. I'm thinking, all right, no big deal. He's making a U-turn. I've seen it happen many a time. In the time it takes me to, to realize he's going way too fast to make a U-turn, which is literally about a second, we hit. And next thing I know, I'm flipped over, sliding uh, in the shoulder, and uh, my cab is filling up with snow. I uh, don't remember if I passed out or not. I don't, I don't think I did. Uh, I'm literally the only person to walk away from that accident. Uh, like I said, the driver, may he rest in peace. He didn't make it. His passenger made it, but he's going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, you know, because they had to take away, like, uh, half of uh, his hip or something. I had a little scratch on my leg, and my knee was hurting like hell. You know, so, I mean, it was just uh, it's a cold world out there, man. It's just like, you know, I tell, you know, it's just, like I said, things happen. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's it's messed up that that happened. At the same time, I still got to keep going. You know what I mean? Not to sound insensitive, anything like that, but it's just like, if I let that affect me, to the point to where I can't drive the truck anymore, then I'd be screwed because I'll be honest, I don't know how to do much of anything else, man. I mean, I'm big and I know how to lift every things, but I'm also 43 years old. Can't we do that shit for much longer? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I have to keep going no matter how that, you know, affects me and everything like that. You know, it just definitely makes me appreciate life more. You know what I'm saying? Definitely does that. And it makes me see things out here just a little bit more clear. I, I'm, 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 I'm at the point now to where if the chain law is in effect, I shut down for the day. Because you know what? If it's that bad, that I got to put on slow chains. Now nah, I don't need to be driving anyway. I don't need to be driving anyway. And besides, even with the, uh, even with the slow chains on, the fastest you can go is like 25 maybe 30 miles an hour. Anything faster than that, and you're risking those chains popping off, and you do not want that. I've seen them shits pop. It's not pretty. It's not that shit will go through a car windshield like nobody's business, like a hot knife through butter. You don't want that. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm like, if the chain laws are up, all right, <laughs> good night. <laughs> we'll try it again in the morning. You know what I mean? Uh, and just, you know, just... Just take a precaution. I'm not saying be all scared and this, that, and the other, but just take a precaution. You know what I mean? It's like I tell car drivers, look, if you're not going to respect the driver, respect the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Respect the fact that even empty, even empty, we're 17 tons of road and thunder. We can't turn on a dime. We damn sure can't stop on a dime. If you brake check us, we are going to run over you, and you're going to lose that battle. You don't want that, okay? I've seen way too many cars trapped under trucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, knock that off. You know, just like, don't break check us. Please don't drive in our blind spots. Stop telling us that we're, you know, number one, okay? Knock that off. Thanks, you know what I'm saying? Get it, got it. All right, cool. You know, and I, I, I know it goes both ways. Like, as far as truck drivers, don't feed into the stereotype, all right? There's already a stigma about us that we're just dirty, smelly, uneducated, you know, dumb motherfuckers. Don't feed into that, okay? Don't get in the left lane if you know you ain't got the, if you know you ain't got the juice to pass somebody, you know what I'm saying? It's like, 
have I been in the left lane? Yes, but it's been to pass somebody. And that's another thing. If I go to pass you in the left lane, don't be a jackass and speed up to where not only can I not pass you, I also can't get back over in the right lane. Don't do that. Please don't. The rolling you know? block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like as far as the drivers go, number one, wash your ass. Yeah, okay. Number two, be nice. You know, and just don't feed into the stereotype, man. Don't don't drive in the freaking left lane. You know, if you're going slow, keep your ass out of the freaking middle lane. Like if if, if if there's if there's three lanes, the speed limit is 65, and you're going 55, get your ass in the slow lane. <laughs> Go on your damn hazards, whatever. You know, what I'm saying to let people know that you're going slow. It's, I mean, it's it's a freaking ebb and flow. You know what I mean? In in life, and and it's things I've learned from you know a handful of truckers I've known. They said a little bit of common courtesy went a long way, and the little things really do help. And I, I as a smaller vehicle driver, I won't lie to you. And yes, I wish smaller vehicles knew this. It's a lot of stuff that you know, the the big rig, the bigger truck guys. Uh, it, it's almost like putting your blinkers on when you're having issues operating and, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, uh, trying to give somebody a heads up and there's something ahead, uh, yeah. you know, little things like that, believe me. And I wish little, the, the little cars knew too. I said, uh, you know, punching, you know, punching your lights to tell somebody thanks for, you know, not, uh, uh, if I knew a truck needed to get move around, and you know, I've slowed people down behind me and let the guy uh -huh. over. And, and 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 people don't remember. I know this sounds stupid. They don't know what's in those trucks. If they were clear, I guarantee you, people would feel a lot different. Yeah, because oh. because it's not just empty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's another one for car drivers and truck drivers at nighttime. If somebody's trying to uh somebody's trying to pass you or whatever and you want to give them the okay signal that you know they got the space to clear you, dim your headlights. Don't flick your high beams because all that's gonna do is just blind the driver and his side mirror looking back at you and whatnot. You know what I mean? It's like if 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 it's like, you know, nighttime or whatever, just dim your lights. That's also a signal to let us know that we got the space to come back over into the right lane, you know. But time after time, I see people just flash on the hobby. It's like, yo, come on, man. What are you doing, man? You trying to blind me over here? Like, take it off. Come on. I it, I, I was going to say that, that all the stuff I've learned from, obviously, you and then the other truckers, things that go into real, you know, in, into real life with men, that's something that – uh if you could think of one thing that we haven't covered that you could say you've learned, I guess, from the trucking world that could bleed over to your life of being a man, what, what would it be? Something from trucking that can bleed over to being a man. All right. At the, at the end of your ship, at the end of the day, we're really not as different as people would make us out to be, especially as the media would make us out to be. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, um, I've met people from all walks of life in this industry. We're, we're really no different. We're mothers, we're fathers, we're sons, we're daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. We've all got somewhere to go, man. Can we all just get there safely in one piece? Can we all just arrive at the place we want to, the same condition that we left the place that we left? Is that really so hard? I mean, is it really worth putting your life on the line for that two or three minutes you may gain by cutting somebody off? And I'm talking about car on car, car on truck, truck on truck, truck on car. Is it really worth it to jeopardize your life like that just you know be nice that's it be nice because again we really are all, all all the same man for real 
Um, I, I think it's pretty deep. Uh, I won't lie to you. I said it was, that was a little off the, a little off my, my plan, my cuff, but that's the two things I mentioned about, you know, people being responsible for the life and people, um, I, I, I like the term self-governing and I know we, we, you know, mentioned about libertarianism. I honestly, as much as, uh, I try to avoid the grandstanding and a lot of the, uh, fluff that many of our, uh, libertarian, uh, brothers seem to throw around, but it, it starts with you. It starts with us, uh, starts how you live your life. And, uh, on the lowest level possible, what can you do in your lives? And I know that we're men. And I always say a man who doesn't want to live his own life and is always asking somebody else to do, you know, not use an entity like the government to have a government doing something for them. I said, you start to lose your, I don't want to say autonomy, but you lose your, uh, there's you lose a your manhood. Yeah. I mean, for me, it, it comes on a personal responsibility, self ownership of your own self. It's like, do you control your own life, or is somebody else pulling the strings? If you don't take control of your life, somebody else will, and it's and that shit ain't gonna be pretty, bro. Okay, uh, I've been in a situation where I didn't control my own life. Well, how'd you do that? When I was in jail, motherfucker. <laughs> You're in jail. You're not in control of your own life. Somebody else is telling you when to wake up, when to go to bed, when to eat, when to shower, when to take a dump, when to go outside, when to come inside, when to talk, when to shut the fuck up. You don't want that. You really don't want that at all. And that can even happen out here in the free world if you fuck up, you know, and you got to go uh, couch surfing like I did. Again, you're under somebody else's rule. You don't want that for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You have to take personal responsibility. You have to be accountable for your actions. I don't rock with people that blame other people for situations that they put themselves in. Because there's always a choice. Now, that choice may be between a, you know, a freaking kick in the nuts and a slap in the face. It's still a choice. You got to make that. Because, again, you don't want someone else to make that choice for you because they might choose both of them shits for you. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? For real. I was – I was. It, it's funny, all that stuff you mentioned about somebody telling you when to eat and when to sleep and when to, you know, crap, when to shower, a lot of those things. It, it, and I always – as much as I want people to laugh about it, being in the military for a large part, that some of it was like that. And I would tell folks, it says – it makes you think, you know, if you're a smart man, and I, obviously I think you're a smart man, but any other man, you would stop to think after experiencing something like that. I said, you know, what should, you know, what can I be doing in my own life? I was like, why would I give over, why would I give over that element of anything to my life? I mean, to somebody else, to an entity, to a government, to anybody. And I don't mean, you know, going to the hospital. I, that's a good and a service. I actually pay for a good and a service. Wow. I pay, you know, all sorts of things that I pay for, but you'd be surprised, uh, being in the military. Yeah. I know you got paid and insert humor. I was like, uh, it's like prison, but you get paid. Um, uh, well, I heard that joke before. I know it's a bad one. <laughs> no, I mean, I get it. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, like, rag on the military, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do have respect for the veterans. But I do get your point. It's it's kind of like you do lose a certain part of your uh, individuality when you join the military because it's not about you. It's about the team. And uh, I get that. I would counter that you're giving up a fraction of your individuality in service to your nation, which I get that. I'll be honest with you, I actually went to basic, didn't have the discipline to make it, and they kindly asked me to leave. Uh, asked me to leave. I was at a Fort Sill. In, uh, Oklahoma, yeah. Yep, Fort Sizzle, as we called it back then. Yeah, Fort Sizzle. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, the military life was was not for me. 
Um, I would also say that it's never too late to unfuck yourself. Never that. Okay, I am 43. I didn't get my shit together till five years ago. All right, seriously. So don't sit there at 24, 25 and think to yourself, oh man, my life was over. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You still have a bunch of time to get your shit together. You really do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a quote from, uh, from a good guy known named Wes Watson on YouTube. This is not a rehearsal. This is a live drill, people. This is not a rehearsal. You only have one damn life. You might as well do what the hell you can to the best of your ability, okay? This is not a rehearsal. You are your greatest assignment. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit here and blame anybody and blame anybody else? for your problems and whatnot, or are you gonna get get busy, hunker down, and run this shit? Choose wisely. <laughs> and one one of the, the the ironic pieces of what you said, I I I wasn't good at the military either, and you're gonna laugh. Four years in an honorable discharge and I made E five and I still wasn't good at it. And you learn, like, it gives you learning opportunity. Even people I've known, the smart ones, the people that were wise at least, you can be wise and not be smart. But the, uh -huh. the, the wise people learned from it and said, you know, okay, that wasn't for me, let's roll. But they also learned something about themselves and they learned, you know, uh, you know how they adjusted to author uh, authoritarian figures, how they saw... Uh, their fellow man, how uh, they reacted to certain things. Could they, uh, the level of comfort they have in conformity, uh, like informing the situations and stuff. And yeah, people were like, Matt, you always, you know, I used to crack jokes all the time. Yeah, my jokes were bad. I played pranks all the time. And yeah, I was like, the people were like, you know, uh, I was never that serious about it. I did my job. And I was never serious about it, but it's one of those things I was like, it, it was an opportunity and something I've learned. And I could even say to the people who didn't make it through boot camp, I was like, don't feel bad about it. Yeah. I said, learn. If you had an opportunity to learn, you learn. I said, uh, I had a rough road and boot camp sucked too. I just was able to. I didn't skate my way through, but when you are running fast enough to stay with a pack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's not like I was a blind wolf. I wasn't in, in charge, but I wasn't getting tackled. I, I was right in the middle somewhere. <laughs> I have to, man. I have to, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I um, said I was uh, <clears throat> 17. My uncle, he was a colonel back then in the uh in the marines and he he pulled some strings to get me in the basic and uh yeah about three weeks i'm just like hey you know what i was just bullshitting same for me boss <laughs> i'm going back out in the free world man i want to go i'm not i'm not really ready for all this man i was just not not ready for it so there's like it's a bus ticket get out <laughs> and um you know i was that and it's like, I've, I've always been a, a hard worker. Nobody can ever take that away from me. But I didn't do anything past the hard work. You know, like, I spent the money fast as I made it. Oh, cool, I got paid for that. I got 600 bucks, man. Go give me some small liquor, give me some weed, give me a hooker. It's going to be a good time. And then come Monday morning, damn, where the fuck got my money go? Fuck. Ah, then you got to do it all over again. You know what I mean? But again, I, I say all that to say this, it's never too late to get back on track, man. Never, 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 never. Okay, and in 2000, I was well on my way to 600 pounds, you know what I'm saying, no direction, you know what I'm saying, had that money, fuck that all up, you know, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm under 400 pounds, you know, um, I can lift heavy things, um, and Got a good woman, got a family now. I have a career, I have a job, and I'm getting myself gradually better. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just a matter of start and continue. You know what I'm saying? There's always going to be hiccups in life. Always. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn who you are. 
Those are going to be some hiccups. What are you going to do after that? You know? One of my favorite, I, I saw a, uh, I was, it was a, I don't know if it was like 300 meter hurdles or something like that, but I saw a guy that, that hit one of those and he fell down and he jumped up like nothing happened. And he just started yep. either plowing through the other hurdles or he ran around them. And then he just ran like nothing happened. And, and yeah, it was weird because I stopped and I was like, the, I kind of understand where he's going. And I made that mistake in my life of not plowing through hurdles myself. And it, even in, in doing the easy things has never been easy. Like it's weird because you mentioned about education. A lot of people don't know I made it through, it took me six years to make it through four years of college. And it was impossible for me to get a job using it. And, but through, you know, me, not me calling people, but I found other jobs. I was able to find a lot of little experience I've had. I've had a lot of crazy jobs and same here. <laughs> I mean, I worked at the chemical plant and I helped firefight, um, unloaded barges on the river. At least I wasn't on the barge, but you know, run, run the crane, run this, uh, you know, I told you about my current position. Uh, I'm supposed to be traveling overseas, but it didn't quite happen because of minor setbacks. Um, but the weirdest thing is that guy inspired me to say, Hey, just pick yourself up. And you know what? I said, yep. if, if you would have gave that guy another like three miles, there's a good chance he probably would have beat those, you know, I always joke and say he could have beat Michael Johnson, you know, give right. him three miles. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it's just, you know, Everybody's gonna have a hiccup. What are you gonna do past that? It's like you know, it's like that, it's like that quote from Mike Tyson. Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, what are you gonna do then? Who oh, you got to plan? Bam! Just punching your mouth. Now what are you gonna do? After your plan, now what? You know? It's like I, I was, I was telling my girl um, uh, a few days ago. Chaos brings out one's true self. Because in that in that in that moment of, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna do? You're gonna find out who the fuck you are in that moment. Are you gonna rise to the occasion, or are you gonna do something else? You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that's be chaos 24/7, because if that happened, chaos becomes the new normal. Then you're gonna have to find something else to test yourself. You know what I'm saying? But every once in a while, you need that. Ah! You know what I'm saying to find out. Okay. This happened. The fuck am I going to do about it? You know, that's 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 a lesson I learned when I was doing security in concerts and clubs. Every once in a while, shit would jump the fuck off. And it's just, okay, your security, you have to jump in this. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, man, uh, I definitely gather some uh, some uh, thick skin and a nice case of don't give a fuck itis from, from working that job, you know? And uh, it's, yeah, man, it's just, you have to take care of you, man. You really, I, I really can't put it no other way. It all comes back to personal responsibility. You are in control of you. You have to run your life. And that was the message that my battery is about to die. So we've been, oh man, I was 41 minutes. Listen, yep. brother, it's been real, it's been fun. I need to go back in, kiss my girl, charge up this phone. Anybody that, that wants to um, holler at me, um, at Cursed Fud, and that's Fud with two Ds for a double dose of this knowledge, okay? And uh, y'all have a good time. Thank you for having me on your podcast, brother. Gotta do it again sometime. Hey, thank you. And I, I had meant, meant to uh, say that we were looking at, I'll be cut off at the two hour mark, but Hey, thank you. Thank you for imparting knowledge to these, these guys. Uh, I know I'm not that far behind you when it comes to age, but to tell folks, I said, I want y'all to learn from my mistakes and from uh, Mr. Johnson, AKA Cursed Fudd, please, please said you got one life. 
Learn, learn, get wisdom when you can. Seriously, this is not a rehearsal, folks. This is not a rehearsal, okay? For real, man. All right. Hey, uh, have a good night. I wanted to thank you for uh, stopping by. Thank you. Be well. Find out what's going to go on pizza. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take care. All right, brother. Bye-bye.